In this presentation, we will use Excel to make a simple random walk simulation. A random walk is a mathematical model in which a walker uh, starts at an origin, starts say at zero, and then with each step takes a random step. So the step can be either positive or negative. And then because it's random, then we tend to consider uh, many, many uh, samples of the walker and do statistics on the set of walkers. A random walk is considered a simple model for Brownian motion. Brownian motion was observed by Brown in 1827 when he looked at a grain of pollen in water. And so the, the grain of pollen is pushed around by the random fluctuations of water and hence is modeled by the, the random walk. The random walk is also considered a model of diffusion. In diffusion, you have two types of things that may be a, a different molecules or different temperatures or something like that, but let's, let's talk about molecules. So you have two sets of molecules and one molecule, there's a smaller amount of, but it's in high concentration when you start. And then the molecules of that smaller but concentrated sample then start to walk around randomly within the fluctuations of the larger molecule and this leads to their diffusion. Here we are showing the setup for our simulation in Excel. So we're going to do the statistics in, in columns A, B, C, and D. So A, which does have the number of steps, B, the standard deviation, C, the skewness, and D, the kurtosis. And then we just skip a column. And then our, we're gonna have 100 samples. And so they're going to be in starting in column F. And so we say in, in F1, we write sample one, and in G1, we'll write sample two. And then if we highlight one and two and drag over Excel, we'll pick up the pattern and make uh, up to sample 100 if we drag far enough. We're gonna simulate a random walk of 50 steps. So in column A, we're just going to set up our count of step. And so in A2, we've entered the number zero, and then we want the numbers one, two, three, four, five, up to 50 below that. And there are a number of ways to get this, but one of the simplest is in A3 to enter a one, and then to highlight A2 and A3 both, and then get the fill handle, what I call the thin black cross in the right-hand corner, and then drag down until we get to 50. As another part of our setup, we want to start all of our 100 samples of random walkers, start them at our origin of zero. So I've entered in F2 a zero and have copied that across to all 100 samples. There are various versions of a random walk, but to keep it simple, in Excel, we are going to allow for three possibilities that, that a walker might make a step to the left, which will represent by a minus one, or a step to the right, which will represent as a one, or stay in place, which will represent by a zero. And so to get these choices of minus one, zero, and one, we can simply use Excel's function rand between open parenthesis minus one comma one. So in F3, we are entering the formula equals F2, wherever we happen to be before, previously, and then plus rand between open parenthesis minus one comma one close parenthesis, and then enter that formula. And so in F2, we're starting at the origin, and then we are making one random step from there. And next we have taken that formula, which was in F3 and copied it down. And so it becomes F2 plus ran between becomes F3 plus ran between becomes F4 ran between. And so we're always taking where we were before and taking one more random step. And so sometimes we're stepping forward and sometimes we're stepping backward at random. And so you see at least this particular instance of the random numbers, what will happen. And remember how Excel treats random numbers. And as you go on and do other things with the sheet, these numbers are going to change. That's just how Excel handles random numbers. So don't worry about it. So at this stage, we have one random walker in column F. And so we're going to take that formula that we have, say, starting in F3 
3 and going down to F52, we are going to copy that formula over into the other columns for the other samples. And in this case, we copied it over to column DA labeled at the top. Now that we have all of our random samples of the random walker, we can do our statistics. And so we, we're not going to do the average because with it equally likely for each walker to take a step to the left, minus one as a step to the right, positive one, the average is going to be close to zero. And so instead, uh, our first quantity of interest is going to be the standard deviation, which we know gives us the, the spread of a distribution. So we're going to take the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation over all of our different samples, and then see how that standard deviation evolves as the number of steps increase. And so this brings in that idea that we said that a random walk is a model of diffusion. So we had this concentration of walkers all at the origin when we started, and then they head in their different directions and they are spreading out. And so the measure of spread is standard deviation. So in column B, we're entering the formula in B2 equals STDEV, and then taking the standard deviation of all the samples, so F2 colon DA2. And this doesn't specify which standard deviation, but we will want the sample standard deviation. We could, of course, have more samples of more walkers. So the, the sample standard deviation is the sensible one here. Next, we would like to look at uh, how the standard deviation depends on the number of steps. And we're going to fit this eventually to a power law. So we are going to skip the first point of zero, zero, because the power law cannot handle a zero in the X or a zero in the Y, since behind the scenes it uses some logarithms and we can't take the log of zero. So we're highlighting the data from A3, B3 down to A52 and B52. And this is the standard deviation as a function of the number of steps and we see that it is growing. Next, we'll do our normal processing of an XY scatter graph. So we will, uh, with the graph highlighted, choose quick layout number nine, uh, then right click on the fit line and uh, change it to a power law fit. Again, that options will not be available if you highlighted that uh, A2 and B2. If you highlighted those zeros, you will not have the power law option. Um, label the axes, add a title, and so on. According to theory, the standard deviation should have a power of one half. So as part of your report, compare the power law power that you got to one half the theory. And how close was, was your value to the prediction? And then talk about what you could do to improve your results. And typically, when we're doing statistics, one of the main ways to improve the results is to do more statistics, to have more samples. So we can also do normal things that we've done in the past with XY scatter graphs and with trend lines. One thing we can do is make some kind of prediction so we can extrapolate our result and think, what would our standard deviation be if we had 100 steps instead of just 50 steps? Next in column C and D, let us do the skewness and kurtosis calculations and drag them down over and see perhaps how they evolve with time. Now the skewness, that the process is always sort of even sort of symmetric one side to the other side. So we never expect the skewness to be much of anything. Uh, the kurtosis, the beginning, the process does not have the sort of standard normal distribution that would give a kurtosis of zero, but it will sort of evolve towards that. So you should see a kurtosis going towards zero as the number of steps increase.